Yo guys, Punk Rao another video. So I had videos auto playing in the background on YouTube the other day, and of course the YouTube algorithm, you know how it works, once you watch a couple of videos on one topic, you'll just get an endless spam with the same thing over and over again. So I spent the last two weeks watching the legend himself, Gordon Ramsay. There was a video that popped up called 5 skills to master in the kitchen, and immediately I was inspired to make a World of Warcraft equivalent for this concept. So for this one, I'm gonna cover some of the most important skills that you need to master going into vanilla to become a true vanilla gamer. So without further ado, here's 5 skills that you should master when it comes to vanilla gaming. Let's get into it. Okay, now this one you guys might be tired of hearing about, but I want to cover it here and I said in the last video that I was going to do an in-depth guide on how to do it. I've seen a lot of comments, people actually saying, no, you don't need to play that way or why would you play that way? I've seen some other comments saying, can you please explain how to do it properly? So in many previous videos, I think I've covered this in three, maybe four different videos. I've told you that you should be remapping your keybinds. So by default, your turn left and turn right are A and D, and your strafe left and strafe right are Q and E, right? So instead of doing that, I've told you to rebind these to these. So turn your turn left and turn right A and D to strafe left and strafe right A and D. Alternatively, you can make this Q and E, and then you'll have to actually map your A and D to something else, but personally, the way I like to do it is actually just making strafe left and right my A and D. Now, the reason you want to do this, there's actually a couple of reasons. So let's say right off the base, if you left it the way it was like this, then you have this, you have two buttons for strafing, and then you have two buttons for turning. That's four keybinds for something that's completely useless. You don't actually have to have that many keybinds set for your movement if you're using your mouse. So the best way to do it is to just make this A and D or this, as I stated, Q and E because then we can actually go into the interface options and bind our Q and E to something actually useful within our rotation because Q and E are probably the two best keybinds that you have access to. And a main reason why you wanna be doing this is something that I've explained called strafe kiting. And if you strafe kite, it looks something like this. So you'll see every single time I'm auto attacking, I'm jumping backwards once and I'm able to just move backwards full speed and kill the character, kill the enemy without it even breaking distance entirely and moving back essentially full speed. Now mix that in with using Q, E and all of your other keybinds, you're able to do that while casting spells running away full speed away from your target. So to do this properly, I'm going to turn my camera on and I'm going to show you guys exactly how it's done. So if you look on my left hand, I'm I'm using A and D to strafe, right? And then my mouse is controlling my camera by holding down on the right click. So holding down right click, I can spin my camera around and I could do that while strafing left and right, which sort of hovers me around. Now, what I'll do is go one jump side and then switch the side. And each time I'm switching either A or D. So now I'm gonna hit A, jump back, switch my camera, D, jump back. So you're going back and forth, essentially. Let's do that one more time. So D jump, A jump, D jump, A jump, D jump, A jump. So D, A, D, look at my mouse, A, D, A. I know I'm over spinning my camera, but just to show you guys. So D jump, A jump, D jump, A jump. D jump, A jump. And while doing that, you could actually see where you're going. So you can run backwards while looking there. And every time you cut your camera, you're actually able to see. So I can even guide myself up this and keep running. So you can kite while looking at your enemy and also through the clipping of your camera, see behind you and guide yourself so that you're kiting consciously. So that you're guiding like, oh, I wanna go through this tree right here. I need to keep, I want to kite around this tree. So I'm going to jump this way and guide yourself consciously seeing where you're going while actually looking behind you and casting spells in the, in the meantime. So this is definitely the most optimized way to play the game. There's a lot of people in the comment section 
that are you know trying to counter it i mean there's always going to be people saying something right but this is the best way to play the game hands down and um if you guys haven't ever perfected this technique or if you've just been too lazy or you, no one's ever showed you this technique then i'd say it's probably the most important thing to do like you can know your hit cap your you know what talents to go all, all of the you know basic things that are important in your class are completely irrelevant unless you actually know how to play your class properly and this is important no matter what you're playing if it's on a warrior tank if it's on a mage it, like whatever class you're playing this is a super important skill especially on a hunter um, so yeah, that's pretty much strafe kiting, and this is definitely a technique that you want to master. Now this next skill cannot be stated enough. I can't explain how much emphasis needs to be put on this one concept. It's the concept of spatial awareness. Now in the new versions of the game, you basically don't need this skill whatsoever. You run everywhere, aggro radius is super small, even if you do pull a pack, it doesn't really matter. It's hard to cause a wipe outside of a boss fight. But in vanilla, aggro radius is quite big, especially if the mobs are higher level than you. So when you're doing a dungeon, I guarantee you if you haven't played vanilla in a long time, or even if you played vanilla like four years ago and haven't been back for a while, you are going to pull mobs accidentally. You're going to cause wipes in dungeon groups. It's just absolutely inevitable. There's pats roaming from around corners. You might turn a corner and there's actually a mob around there that you didn't know about and you'll aggro it. You might back up and jump somewhere and then there's actually a mob through a door somewhere else that sees you and comes running with four of his friends. In classic WoW terminology, it's referred to as ass pulling. And I guarantee you, no matter how good you think you are at the game, how good you think you are at retail, you are going to ass pull in dungeons. And if it's not you, then it's going to be the male night elf hunter behind you. And you're the one who's going to have to deal with it. So this is super important. Every single dungeon that you go through is kind of like a maze. There's little strategies at every single corner. You have to know where every single mob is, where every pat is. So try to develop a keen visual awareness, spatial awareness, understanding your layout. Don't ever step too far ahead without thinking. There, You can't not think in vanilla. It's not like retail where you could go through entire dungeons, heroic spams over and over again while just like zoned out watching Netflix hitting one and two. In vanilla, you need to be paying attention at all times and understanding what mob is where, what mob needs to be CC'd, what pat needs to be avoided, where to run, how to skip through specific zones and how to get around corners and different things. Like it, It's all really, really important and it's a skill that you need to focus on day one or you're gonna have a whole lot of trouble and you don't wanna be the guy who's ass pulling because those people that you're doing dungeons with, they're gonna remember your name and when they're doing a Zulgarub pug or a Molten Core pug, they're gonna see you and they're going to say, nah, I don't want this guy in my group. So this next skill I'm going to cover really fast, and it's aggro control or threat control, threat management. Now, again, if we contrast this to the newer version of the game, it's not even really a factor. A tank goes in, thunderclaps once, or if he's a paladin, consecrates, whatever the ability is, and the mage can just frost orb, full combo, AoE, everything, no worries. The warlock can AoE, everyone can just full on just AoE and kill everything right off the bat. You're never really going to out aggro the tank even after one spell. But in vanilla, I've stayed this so many times that aggro is very delicate so understanding how to manage your threat and getting a feel for what you could do and when you can do it is extremely important just like ass pulling in dungeons if you're a mage coming from retail you're most likely gonna have a tank pull a bunch of mobs and then just want to aoe all of them because there's like 10 skeletons there maybe you're doing strat or whatever the dungeon that you're doing you're gonna go in for a full combo and then everything is gonna get ripped off the tank and come chew your face off I've seen this happen so many different times where mages specifically are just used to using their AoE abilities willy nilly, but that's not something that you can do in Classic WoW. And also single target threat management is super important as well. It's a relatively simple one, just understand your threat management, be careful and do everything in a controlled manner and understand your limitations. And also of course, download a threat meter, a threat meter will save your life. More so on single target threat, but in general it helps to understand how much threat a tank can pull and when you're pulling too much threat. So this one is target micromanagement. And what I mean by that is multitasking different utility spells or just multitasking in general when it comes to affecting multiple different targets. So in the newer versions of the game, you don't really have to do this so much. There's no real CC required to do raids at all. It's more of a PVP thing in general. And you also have a focus target or in PVP, you have arena targets, which you can cast spells on without actually toggling their unit frame. Now in vanilla, there's none of those luxuries. You have to actually micromanage and reactively click or tab target different targets 
targets if you want to get things done. So whether it's PvE and that hunter ended up pulling a mob, you're going to have to reactively click it, reactively tab target to it, sheep it, or cone of cold it, put a frost nova and then sheep one. If you're a rogue, you'll blind, maybe you'll gouge. And all of this has to be done in a more manual way. Now in BGs, it's the same thing. If you're a high-end PvPer, you can't just put your mouse over someone and mouse over focus them and that way you have the healer on your focus you could do damage to other people and then maybe focus counterspell the healer you need to actually get very used to using your mouse to target different targets and in classic wow using that engine i think we'll be able to use mouse over macros if i'm not mistaken or at least it's gonna be more simple than it was in vanilla i think there are some macros when it comes to mouse over i personally never got it to work and i just made it work without it by manually executing everything that i wanted to do but in the new engine it might actually be relatively easy to just make mouse over macros but again you're using your mouse again so it's all about mouse control vanilla for pve or pvp using your mouse to click nameplates in order to interrupt a spell or cast a cc or do something is incredibly important and also for a tank let's say if you're tanking multiple mobs and one of the mobs ends up pulling away from you clicking that unit frame taunting it back onto you so just in general mob control and mouse control is super important now this last one is more catered towards PvP, but like most things in the player versus player world, they can equally be applied to PvE scenarios. I find there's this common misconception of people thinking that PvP skills mean absolutely nothing in the PvE world, which I think is massively disrespectful to most serious PvP players. So in conjunction to mouse and target control is gadget usage. This is a huge part of vanilla. Engineering is by far the number one min-maxing profession there is. There is really no other option. And understanding how to utilize these gadgets can save your life, save the group from a wipe, or open up opportunities for you to take on multiple enemy players in a world PvP scenario. There's also gadgets available outside of engineering in the form of nets that you can throw at enemies, magic dust which can put enemies to sleep, and of course the engineering core of grenades, goblin rocket helm, and spell reflector. Mastering the timing and use of these gizmos and gadgets will set you apart from the average player, so this is definitely something that you should put emphasis on and keep practicing. Also trinkets in general I'd say are pretty much gadgets, and there's a ton of useful ones out there. So make sure to keep this add-on here called Trinket Menu, once it's been ported over to Classic. I'm not sure if it has yet or if it's available. This is going to allow you to swap trinkets on the fly, so when you use one trinket and it's on CD for maybe 5 minutes, you can get out of combat somehow, maybe if you're a rogue just vanish, pop on another useful trinket in the meantime and just keep swapping trinkets over and over again depending on what you need. As a hunter, you could also pop a trinket and then feign death in a PvE scenario, drop in combat, swap to another one, and then it'll be ready to go once the base 30 second timer is done ticking. And of course you can do that in PvP as well. So definitely master your gizmos. All right, fellas, so there's more skills, of course, but these are the five ones that I settled for this list. Hopefully you guys learned something from this one. A lot of you guys probably already know most of the information like usual, but for some of you newer guys out there, these skills will save you some headache in the future for sure. So try to master them if you want to have the best vanilla experience possible. So that's it for me on this one, boys. If you want to see more content from me, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill soldiers, hit the notification bell as well, follow my Twitch, join my Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.